Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Wakak Wadash. The one to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone who were well that taught us this truth, and much love, greetings, and salutations to all the fellow laborers of the Tabernacle of David, the old forty legs, gathered up the four corners of the earth. And uh, what you see on the screen is uh, an individual by the name of James McDonald, in which, uh, you know, he was a former gang member. A drug dealer, you know, he was a criminal, a street cat from the streets of uh, Compton, you know, which um I grew up in that city. And um what you'll learn from this dude's story, you know, going into, you know, you know, his uh troubled past, his life experiences, you could see why our people the way they are in these cities are the way they are. You know, based on the traumatizing things that they've experienced at home, because that's where it starts. It starts at home. Um, it plays a, a, a very essential role into the character that you become. And uh, he's a testimony of that. All right. He grew up to become a ruthless gang member. You know, he had a little, you know, fear in the streets. You know, his brothers were all gang members. They were power rules. And all these Jakes that you see up in the streets, you know, uh, claiming, claiming turfs, you know, throwing up they set, you know, uh, wearing rags in their pockets, you know, banging on, you know, a Jake from another block. All these dudes, what they all have in common is a broken home. You can see where all the dysfunctionality comes from. All right. And that's part of the curse. Curse shall you be in the uh, city. Curse shall you be in the field. All right. And he's, uh, you know, just another example. And what I want to do is I want to play this video because it was an interesting, you know, uh, listen, you know, because this cat, you know, um, if you go on Vlad TV, DJ Vlad, you know, that that uh, that kite, that culture vulture, you know, he basically gives interviews to exploit, you know, Jake culture and even to um, exploit, you know, the, the dysfunctional, you know, activity and different experiences of Jake, he likes to exploit that, you know, for his ratings and, and, and for his view, for entertainment value, right? And um, he happened to be one of the guys who um, he's, he's given an interview for because he actually used to run with Suge Knight. And um, he was behind Suge's muscle, you know, he had security, which were dudes from his, his neighborhood, which, you know, um, Suge met him and he, he introduced Suge to the rest of his uh, boys from their neighborhood because they all lived in the same neighborhood. And they grew, they came up with Suge and Suge pulled them in once he, beca once he became, you know, that uh, 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 record mogul, you know, the CEO of Death Row Records. So he had a little pull, he had money. And um, he gave these dudes from his neighborhood a job to basically be security for Death Row Records. But his security was basically gang members. You have like regular security guards that'll, you know, protect artists, but Suge actually rolled with street dudes. And that's what made uh, Suge become the, the menacing figure that people in the hip hop industry speak about to this very day. It was because of the guys that he surrounded himself with that made people fear Suge Knight. And he was one of uh, the original muscles for Suge. So that's the reason why you know, uh, Vlad is, you know, bringing him on, you know, to his um, platform because, you know, he's part of, you know, that history. All right. And his he had a younger brother, you know, who came, he who he brought to uh, Suge in, in the circle. And, um, you know, they uh, when Tupac came to death row, Tupac got close to these cats and Pac became a part of that gang uh, culture, which it was as backwards. You know, how you a celebrity, you know, you, you, uh, you're you an actor and a rapper, and you're getting yourself involved in street politics and gangs. And that ended up resulting in, you know, Tupac getting uh, put to death by another uh, gang member from Compton. All right? All this stems from the curses. As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 54, uh, uh, 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee 
till thou be destroyed. And we are destroyed as a people. All right. Look at the conditions of our people. Uh, psychologically, you know, mentally, our people are mad. They're gone. They hate, they hate they self, which shows in how they treat each other. They don't know who their higher power is. They, 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 they're very uh, hopeless. They only take the power into their own hands to, to, to get by. All right. They don't have no assurance of their life. They don't know how long they're going to live. So they they be they very destructive, man. On edge, very impulsive. Right? It says, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power. And that's the thing. We sinned against the Heavenly Father. We broke his covenant. Our people sin, and then when you tell them what sin is, are you gonna repent? Nah, I'm, I'm gonna keep on doing it, man. Well, that's why you're destroyed. Isaiah 5 and 13, it says, My people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. Okay, to do you, you, you're wise to do evil, but to do good, you have no knowledge. So that's why the Lord said He would reject you and your children, and now you're cursed. It says to keep His commandments and His statutes which He commanded thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So all the conditions of the curses will be upon us, you know, generationally, especially if um you know as a nation, as a collective. We're sinning against the Heavenly Father. And even to this day, majority of our people are just, they just, they're broken beyond uh, repair, man, to the point of no return. Are totally degenerate, uh, very dysfunctional, evil. You know, they don't have any uh, judgment, any mercy. It says truth is perished in the land. That's why the Lord have that controversy with you because there is no truth nor mercy or, or judgment in the land, man. All right? So that's why the ghettos all over Babylon and even in other parts of the world, that's why we're suffering the way we suffer, man. All right? Now let me jump down to the point. All right? And these conditions happened to us when we were besieged in Jerusalem. All right? But even these conditions play out on our people even without being besieged by the enemy. We're basically, we're entrenched in in these ghettos and, and slums and projects and the vadios. You know, we're, we're, our people are just heartless to each other, man. We are limited of resources. Our, we, we rob each other for, for, for resources, man, instead of going to the enemy. Right? This is uh, Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 54. It says, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate all right, and 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 back then you know we had a loving uh, a, a kindness spirit amongst uh the the brothers in in Israel man all Israel at one point in time you know we were we we were comrades we treated each other as such we had love we were tight knit you know we were like family you know we showed love to each other but that spirit was was long lost, especially in captivity, man. Where the, where, where the enemy basically put us against each other. The Woody Lynch syndrome. It says his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. So and, and that eye could be evil for different reasons, whether you you know you have a uh, uh, insecurity issues, you uh you, you got jealousy and envy. That's what causes that evil eye, man. A brother might be doing better than you or he got what you don't have and you feel like you deserve it. You feel entitled. You feel like, man, he's no better than me. So why should he have these things? Why can't I have it? So that 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 evil eye come upon you and now you feel like you justified in robbing your brother or putting him to death so you can take it in your own possession or setting him up. That's what happens a lot in the hood set you up to get robbed or they actually will rob you or you might suspect you know another dude of you know uh, plowing with your with your woman sleeping with your woman and the next thing you know you go and kill the dude and now you go into prison and now your children is is left without a father or or or, or vice versa man and this is this curse is what uh brings forth the dysfunctional uh, uh family 
This is what breaks the family structure right here. All right? That evil spirit. It's basically a demon that comes upon us, and it breaks the family up. It puts tension between the mother and the father, or sometimes even the parents and the children. It says, and toward the wife of his best, uh, uh, bosom, he become jealous of his wife, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. And sometimes, Jake, I have that uh, intuition, you know, like, man, that child might not even be mine. So he starts to treat that child with disdain to the point where his discipline becomes abuse. You know? And then the, 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 the mother, you know, she's traumatized by it. The child is traumatized by it. So he, you know, to avoid, I guess, you know, getting uh, uh, persecuted by the cops or whatever, you know, he'll just leave the household. And now that leaves the woman and the children, you know, uh, stranded. Now the government got to step in. And Esau, he comes in and he plays the father. He, he Now he's the parent. Now the state becomes the head of, of the household. So now the government is raising your child. Okay? So that's what happens. And then the same thing applies to the woman. The woman does the same thing. She runs the man out of the house because she don't want to come up under, you know, the the, the, the authority and the, and, and the, and the dominant uh, uh, enforcement of the of the husband she want to rule the show she want to be defiant and, and out of order feminism bro, uh, did that so now the father doesn't want to be in the house okay so i say all that to say i want to play this clip you know so you can actually hear just a life uh, uh, a actual real to life tale of the curses, man. And it's when you listen to it, you like, man. And a lot of certain Jakes, you know, some of you brothers can probably relate, or some of you know Jakes, all right, that that live like this or or went through that, man. So without further ado, let me just uh play this real quick. My pops used used to whip my ass. Um And this is a hard OG power blood dude, okay? But what led to him living like that? Well, he's about to tell you. He had an issue with, with wondering if I was not his son. You know what I'm saying? And, and he would come. Which is the spirit of jealousy that comes upon a man. When he suspect, you know, like, man, something ain't right, man. You know? And that's why even to this day, certain men be trying to have their baby mamas go and take that test because they don't even know if that's really his because you have a lot of our women that are a bunch of whores and they just be sleeping around with different dudes and they'll they'll be quick to to put a baby or whoever it is that they're dealing with at the moment and she'll be quiet about affairs that she had where it could have been another dude that impregnated her but she's going to the to the the courts and and, and putting your name upon that child's birth certificate and you got certain cases where jake is 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 not the actual biological father but he's been duped into taking care of that child thinking that child was his the whole time even though that child don't even have his features man she'll still put the child on you like no you're the father all right and and, and you're going to help me raise it the other dude he's he he, he skated off scot-free that happens man the scriptures say that our wives shall be harlots in the city man so his mom probably got down like that. So that's probably why his father had those feelings. So he took that frustration out on, on his sons, man. This is how it all starts, man, right in the household. Let me continue. Come from the motorcycle club and, and wake me up two, three in the morning and whoop my ass. Certain things I did at school, he would just whoop my ass for it. And you know, I didn't understand why he did it. But he used to whoop my ass, and it just got worse and worse every time he whooped my ass. And the scriptures tell you to, to chasten your son. Let me see if I can find that real quick. <clears throat> you got to put the rod to him, you know? Let me get that real quick. I know it's in Proverbs. I just don't know exact. I don't remember exactly where. Uh, where. Uh, let 
All right, yeah, there's a few of them. Um, our Proverbs 13 and 24 says, He that spare of his rod hate of his son, but he that loveth him chasten him b times. And if you you fucking up, hey, your 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 your, your father is supposed to enforce that that fear so that you'd have his respect. Because the scriptures say to try to train up a child in the way that he shall go. And when he and when he gets older, he will not depart from thee. You know? But Jake, you know, they'll take it overboard, especially if they have feelings, you know, negative feelings towards that child. Like he feel like it ain't his. Like in that in this uh brother's uh I say brother, this guy's um uh instance, you know, he'll instead of disciplining them, he'll actually abuse them. And what that does is it leaves trauma traumatizing uh traumatic effects on that child man to where when they when when children experience traumatic situations it never leaves them they never forget that and it and it, and it plays a role in them in, in their minds you know psychologically all right and that's why they grow up they grow up and become dysfunctional like man what the what the hell is wrong with this dude you now why is he you know fighting the teacher why is he you know throwing it you know knocking the desk all over the place why is he always getting into fights you know, why is he leaving school to go hang out with niggas? Why is he uh, uh, hitting licks, breaking into houses and stuff? You see where it comes from. It's, it's anger and resentment for the parents, man, for, for their lack of neglect, affection, whatever the case may be. Abuse. All right. But, hey, at the same time, a loving father, he'll, he'll chasten you, but he'll tell you why he's chastening you. Like I'm not, I'm not uh, whipping on you, son, just because I hate you. I, I don't hate you. I actually whipping you because I love you, and I want you. I want to see you do better. I don't want to see you. I don't want to lose you to these streets out here. I want what's best for you. You know. Uh, this is uh, Proverbs 22, and uh, 15. It says, "Foolishness is in the bound of the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him." Withhold not correction from the child. This is Proverbs 23 and 13. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Like, you ain't going to kill him. Just put that belt to his, to his backside, and he'll remember, you know, why you chastened him. But you got to make sure you have that talk with him. Don't just beat their ass, man. That's like, our women, our, our, the mothers do that shit, man. They just, just beat the shit out you, man. And, and if the child is left, confused wondering why you're doing this then they feel like man you really hate me because because what what am i doing to deserve this and that's psychological man it says thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell okay so going back his father was was doing it wrong man all right so let me continue because you know it, it gets more interesting so one one time he whooped my ass. He whooped me with a stitching cord. It, it ain't the first time, but he just whacking. And I got scars on my face, my neck, all kind of shit, my back. So I grabbed the stitching cord. I grabbed the stitching cord. He grabbed a high heel shoe and started busting me in my head. So I got stitches from him. You know, he took me to the hospital. The doctor asked him what happened. I was about to say something, and he was standing to the side looking at me, and I, I didn't say shit. Uh, to be honest, I was scared. You know, is he going to do this again if I say something? So I didn't say nothing, and he just looked at me. He brought me to the house. He told him that me and my brother was playing, and I hit my head on the edge of the dresser. So shit just started getting out of, out of hand then. Now I'm carrying guns at a young age. And at that time, my little brother, he was curious and shit what me and me and Alton and was into, you know, so we come home one night. I see my little brother playing with the pistol, him and a friend across the street. So I go across the street to try to, where my fucking guns at? So I snatched the gun out of my little brother's hand and pointed at What if it had a bullet? And I squeezed the trigger and it went off, bah. So I shot him. Went intentionally, but I shot him. So that freaked me out and then what is this dude gonna do to me for just shooting my little brother? You know what I'm saying? So I had other guns. So 
by destroying this one that I just used because it freaked me out that I just shot my baby brother. You know what I'm saying? I just threw the gun on the ground, fucked it up, and Pops was like, where this motherfucker at? I got a gun on him. Hey, if you touch me, I'ma shoot you. I ain't no little boy no more. I'm out of game banging. You ain't finna whoop my ass like that no more. So, so he basically, the father left, lost his son to the streets. Because his father, you know, him and his, uh, his father and his mother, you know, they, they were, um, you know, they were going through issues. And they were more than likely, you know, separating. You know, a lot of stuff was happening, man. That's where all, that's where the curses fall in. It was very dysfunctional. The household was being broken up, basically. So he lost his son to the street. So when your child get become a certain age, he, he, hey, he's 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 really he's grown now. So you missed out on whatever it is that you could have done, you know, to to restore your son or even your daughter. Once they become a certain age, it's too late, man. Then they become hardened unto you. So he lost his his son to the streets and now now that he's older he's a little more um stern now the streets made him harder so now when his father tries to come with that you know strict discipline which really you know he was you know it was damn near on a a, a, a the level of abuse he wasn't afraid no more man now you'd have made your own son your enemy and this is where that resentment comes in at where a lot of jakes you know, they, they, they have a soft side for their mother and have a, a resentment for their father, man. And in society, it's all about that. It's the queen of heaven worship. You know, you, you, you're closer to your mother than you are with your father. And the scriptures tell you you're supposed to honor your father and your mother. Okay? And this is why Jake don't live long, man. But his father was dysfunctional. He had issues. So it was bound that his, his children was going to be uh, de destroyed too. And the scriptures say this, let me get these two precepts. <clears throat> All right. And this is where he, he, he lost his, you know, his, his child. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming his other brothers more than likely felt the same way. This is Ephesians uh, 6 and 4 says, And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonishing of the Lord. And really, you know, Jake in the world, you know, they ain't teaching their sons and their daughters the, uh, the law, statute, commandments. You know, because that's what they're supposed to be instructing us in. When we, when we were younger, our tutoring was supposed to be in, the, in the, the, the knowledge and wisdom of the scriptures. All right, the judgments. But in this society, you know, we're in captivity and we're under the curse. So we have to learn what this damn devil uh, installs into us, man. It's this is so-called uh, uh, educational system, and if you and if you try to um, you know teach discipline to your child, they can call that uh, child abuse, or you know, even right even as we speak, you know, um, a report that came out how the CPS is taking away children based on this uh, uh, technology called the predictive analyt analytics computer. Uh, computer program or something like that and it basically that through that program it will determine whether the parents you know can uh, uh have their children or not you know that's and that's wicked as hell man they literally have software to label parents as unfit uh, uh parents man and they could take your children from you you know so in this captivity you don't even you can't even enjoy you know the the uh the fruits of the womb, man. Your inheritance. All right, that's the curse, man. But anyway, let me uh, let me get this one too. This is uh, Colossians. It says the same thing. Uh, Colossians three and uh, twenty one. Real quick, and it says, "Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged." All right. So, hey. Uh, when you when you offend a child, you know, it's harder for them to be one, man. Cause it was traumatizing, so it never left him. So that 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 anger was just gonna rest in his in his bosom 
until until his dying day. And you gonna you gonna actually see that to this day he's still heartless against his uh his own father, man. All right, let me play this real quick. So it wasn't going down. So he finally tried to sell a house on moms and put us all in the street. The judge wouldn't let him do it. So the judge gave the house to moms. We paid him out. We stayed, we stayed. Which well. is wicked, which is wicked. If he's the one that bought the house, that's his house, man. You see how Esau uh, works, how his system works against the, uh, the man? No wonder, man. And this is why the household is so jacked up, man. All those, all those houses, th these jakes are, are being raised by their angry mothers without a father in the house. That's why we're destroyed in the city. All right? And our, and our mothers, they learn the ways of the serpent, so they become destructive. And... and Therefore, your children will become destructive, taking on what their mothers are teaching them. This thing is, it, it gets deep, man. Let me uh, continue. Where we was at? I was rid of him in 2000. 2001, he passed. You know, he came from Texas. He had cancer. So he told us he had cancer and he wasn't going to live too long. My first impression was, I wouldn't give a fuck if you did have it. And my sister, my older sister, told me we got to forgive and forgive. We got to let it go. He come way out here to talk to us, so just talk to him. So I talked to him, played dominoes with him, had a drink with him. But the damage was already done. You know what I'm saying? He fucked me up as a child. So we went to the funeral in Texas. I stayed outside smoking my cigarettes. They said, why you ain't in there? Screaming over your dad. Where my dad at? Well, if he here, let me know. Oh, I was clowning. And right now today, I don't give a fuck if he gone or not. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do nothing for me. You know, I had an issue with my mother. You know, because she sat there and watched this dude, like, like really try to tear me apart. You know what I'm saying? And didn't come to my rescue. So, you know, being in the hood and, and the homies coming over, them ain't your friends. Shut up, bitch. These are my homies. We just start talking. So you see how you see that. So Jake, they grow up to and, and they grow up having no respect for their mothers either because they watch the type of behavior by their mothers. You know, our women do a lot of a lot of these women of our nation. They do a lot of shit that makes them look very uh, uh, dishonorable in the sight of their own children, man, that their own children don't have respect to them. You know, whether our, 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 our mothers, you know, get on drugs and neglect their children to the streets, or whether she has a, a whole bunch of baby daddies, she bring a whole bunch of men through the house and watch how those dudes treat their mother. And they grow up and they treat women how they saw their mom, man. You know? That's why Jake lacked respect to this very day. And, and that's that the scriptures say that in Proverbs, man, about, you know, there's a generation. Let me get that in uh, Proverbs 30. Let's get that. This is uh, Proverbs 30 and 11. It says, there is a generation that curse of their father and doeth not bless their mother. He's a, he's a prime example, man. This guy right here, he didn't have no respect for... Both of his parents, but hey, both of his parents were dishonorable too themselves. They were all, they're all under the curse, man. And they passed that curse down through the children, man. You can see it. And this is why the, the streets in, in these cities where Jake has to grow up at, this is why it's all fucked up, man. All this dysfunctionality, it just, it just flourished all through the streets. And that's why it's not safe among your own in the ghetto in the city, man. All right. It says there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. And they think that they're right there, that they're right, man. They go according to their own emotions. They they justify themselves through how they feel, their emotional feelings, man. And that's very dangerous. But that's how our people are, man. All right. So. Let me. Uh, let this play out and then I'm gonna uh, hit 
you know, a few more scriptures and I'm gonna close out. She just, I just want to apologize for you not liking me. Mom, it ain't that I don't like you. It's a lot of things you did that, that made me feel like you didn't want me. I disrespected women because you treated me the way you did. You know, slapping me and telling me you hate me because this dude is fucking another bitch and outdoing him. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 that fucked me up. This is uh, going back to the curse. Deuteronomy 28 and 56, it says, The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. Okay? And that's what happened, man. You become just a, another check, a, a, you know, a, 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 a uh, uh, income tax check for your mother, man. Section 8, food stamps. She can't stand your ass, but you benefit her. You know? But she can't stand you because she can't stand your father. All right? Showing you that the curses only fit us. The curses only fit us, man. The, the, the so-called black man, the so-called Hispanic man, and even the so-called natives too, man. Okay? But mainly, I, I'm going to say predominantly Judah. We suffer that the hardest, man. Okay? Let me go from there to uh, Job 39 and 16. And it says, I'll start at verse 13 just to get the context to it. It says, Gave us thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks? or wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. Okay? And you see that, you know, with, when you see the so-called black woman, and she has, uh, don't let them be sons, man, her little young sons, you know, three, four, five years old. All right, she, man, she talked crazy to him, man. Like they grown as uh, men. You know, you ain't shit. I wish I could just, just abort your ass. Like, they just be saying crazy shit, man. And, and guess what? That lives with them. They don't forget that. So that's why they grow up, they become how they are, man. That's why you got to love your children, man, and, and instruct them and, and teach them. All right? Nurture them if you have a, 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 a child or children. All right. <clears throat> so I didn't give a fuck about no woman because I didn't give a fuck about my moms. And I disrespected my mother for a long time until I went to prison. And once I got my head clear and talking to the motor cats up in there, I came home with a different attitude. And I've been loving my mama ever since that. Ever since that, I felt I owed her. All the way up to her death, I took care of the last two years of her life. You know, I owed it my mama that. Thanks for watching Street TV. And he got older and he, he had to learn from his experiences, man. And that was bad that he was able to just make up with his mom, but, you know, wasn't able to do the same with his father. That goes to show you, you know, that dysfunctional curse that we have, man, where, you know, Jake really don't love their fathers, man. They actually have a hatred for their own father. And your father is the one that, 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 you know, you came from out of him. You know? So that's the reason why our, our people don't live long. All right? So let me go to uh, Sirach, the third chapter, and I'm going to just uh, close out. Uh, Sirach 3. And um, I'll start at verse 5. It says, Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he make of his father, he shall, he shall be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. All right, and, and this is from the perspective of an Israelite father who's actually a man of the Lord, or who's instructed in the way of, of righteousness. And he's going to uh, instruct those values 
into his uh, his sons. He's going to instruct them and teach them in the, in the righteous way. All right? But we fell away. So we're cursed. All right? But either way, even though our fathers don't really have the truth, you still have to, in some way, in some capacity, you still show respect to them because, you know, they birthed you. Okay? But if you don't do that, hey, you're not going to live long. And, re and, and really, if, if you was raised up by a man of the Lord, then you would live according to the ways of, of the of the Most High, which the scriptures tell you in the beginning, if, if, if you, um, you know, live in these statutes and commandments, that you will live a, a long life. All right? Because the wages of sin is what? Death. It says, he that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Because your parents are basically like, like your master, man. Somebody who has the rule over you. But once you become of age, then you're no longer under their rule. You, you have your own household, and then when you have sons and daughters, they become, you know, you, you become masters over them. Right? It says, honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother root of our foundations. And, and that's why these broken homes is why us as a nation are very dysfunctional. All that killing in the streets, all the dope dealing, all that uh, robbing each other, carjacking, all that stuff that you see is because of, of the lack of that, that, that foundation, man. Getting rid of the, uh, of the father and letting the mother raise the household. All right? Being under the curse. All right? So anyway, you know, and, and, and you know, pretty soon, man, once we deliver, because, you know, that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on the deliverance. Once we deliver, man, it would be no more the curse. All right, let me get that. We're going to be able to enjoy our families again. All right. And we got to remember, we went through all this because of our iniquity. This is Revelation 22. And uh, verse, I'll start at verse one. It says, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, which is um, parabolic of uh, the wisdom. Okay. The, the, the river of living water, man, the, 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 the knowledge. Right, it says clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb, and in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month, and the and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. All right, so we, the, the Most High is going to put the laws, statutes, commandments in our inward parts, and we're going to become the, the the wisest people on the planet Earth. All right, we're going to be like gods and goddesses on the earth. This is in the kingdom. All right, we're going to know good and evil, and we're going to be judging the nations. Verse 3, it says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. So we're not going to have those these curses no more. When you read the previous chapter over, it says how the Lord's going to wastely wipe, you know, wipe the, um, the tears from our eyes. This is Revelation 21 and 4, it says, and the Most High power shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, no more depression, you know, no more uh, uh, post-traumatic syndrome, slave syndrome, you know, no more uh, evil eye against each other. All that is going to be wiped away. It says, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Yeah, you ain't going to be mourning, you know, pouring out your little drink, drink offering for the dead. Or you lost your best friend or your homies, you know, in, 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 in a murder, a, a homicide. All that's going to be of the past, man. That was when we was under the curse. Okay. So, you know, I, you know, this, this uh, inspired me to do a, a response video. And also you can go on Vlad on, on Vlad and you can see his interview, you know, and um, he actually goes into this as well on that in that interview, you know. I was like, man, the, the curses is real, man. So anyway, I hope this was uh, edifying. I want to give all praise to y'all. Y'all shy. Till next time, shalom.